There's evidence of bikini-style clothing as early as 5600 BC. Although they didn't call it bikinis, many people from different civilizations have used similar pieces. Throughout history, there's been a dilemma between modesty and freedom. Seeing that in Roman times, women had the freedom that they didn't have in the 1800s. Today, we are going to go through the evolution of the bikini, from way back until today. In the Chalcolithic era of around 5600 BC, the mother goddess of Adelhike, a large ancient settlement in southern Anatolia, was depicted astride to leopards while wearing a bikini-like costume. In Greek paintings dating back to 1400 BC, depicted women wearing two-piece garments resembling bikinis and mainly used for athletic purposes. Athletic women of ancient Greece wore breastband called a mastodon, which then continued being used in the Middle Ages. Artwork dated back to the Diocletian period, around 305 AD, excavated in Villa Romana del Casale, shows various women wearing an attire which would be very similar to a bikini. This is all part of the mosaics of the place. In ancient Rome, the bikini-style bottom, a wrapped loincloth of cloth or leather, was called a subligaculum, while a band of cloth or leather to support the breasts was called strophium or mammillaire. One of the findings in Pompeii show a statue of the goddess Venus wearing a bikini. When the kings of Naples discovered these Pompeii artifacts, including the one meter tall, almost unclothed statue of Venus, they found them so shocking that they kept them in a secret chamber and only showed to what they called mature persons of secure morals. There are references to bikinis in ancient literature as well. A Latin poet by the name of Marshall, who published between Ad 86 and 103, satirized a female athlete he named Fellinis, who played ball in a bikini-like garb. In the 1800s, swimsuits were called bathing gowns, and they were long dresses that allowed women to not show much skin, commonly made of wool. Bathing gowns had long skirts, and sometimes weights were sewn into the hems so the fabric wouldn't float up when it was submerged in water. In the early 1900s, some women didn't even let their feet go naked. Bathing gowns were usually accessorized with bathing slippers, which were shoes that protected feet from broken glass and shells. During this time, it was also common for women to accessorize their bathing suits with small hats, called bathing caps, they were often used to protect one's hairstyle. As modesty was still quite important, women popularly covered up their bathing gowns with bathing coats. Sometimes these coats were made from silk, and they typically had long sleeves and full capes. After years of piling on the clothing to go in the water, women traded bathing gowns for more form-fitting swimsuits that featured shorter skirts. This was around 1915. Also, Women began being called out in public and punished for wearing swimsuits that law enforcers considered too revealing. In the 1920s, swimsuits' necklines got lower. As swimsuits became more practical, they also showed off more of a woman's body. Deep boat necks or v-necks became more popular, and armholes on suits got bigger. Throughout this decade, women had to be careful to make sure their suits weren't too short or too revealing, since beaches had certain swimsuit regulations designed with modesty in mind. The enforcement and protesting of these swimsuit regulations continued throughout the 30s and 40s. Throughout the late 20s and early 30s, men's swimsuits were simple and typically striped. Men's swimsuits consisted of a one-piece outfit that resembled a tank top attached to shorts, in the 30s, women's swimsuits started to resemble one-piece men's swimsuits. They were cut higher in the leg and showed more of the woman's back than they had in the past. A decade later, in the 40s, the one-piece changed again to resemble a short, tight dress with thin straps and a v-neck. The top looked like a standard bra, and the skirt covered a woman's backside, hips, and upper thighs. French designer Louis Reard created a daring two-piece swimsuit that would later be known as the first bikini in July 1946. It revealed a small amount of one's midriff and consisted of a halter top and shorts. Throughout the 40s, swim briefs became popular for men. 
They were typically high-waisted and were cut quite short. They'd initially been made of wool, although a rayon spandex blend fabric was becoming more popular at this time. In the 50s, the material of bathing suits changed again. Although one-piece and two-piece suits still looked similar to the suits of the 40s, the material continued changing in the 50s. Nylon and elastic were used to make suits stretchier and to help them dry faster. The 60s brought about more tight swimsuits. Bikinis got tighter and smaller in the 60s, and even one-piece suits became more revealing. By the 70s, swimwear continued to get more revealing and daring. Thongs, string bikinis, cut-out swimsuits, and even sheer suits became trendy. Throughout this decade, women's swimsuits were commonly covered in colorful patterns, and so were men's swimsuits. The 1980s featured bold, colorful, patterned suits. It's probably not surprising that the 80s were bold in terms of aesthetics. Bright neons and animal prints were quite trendy. The 90s featured colorful and funky swimsuits. Bathing suits didn't come down in the 90s. If anything, they got even bolder. Advertisements from the 90s show swimsuits in super bright colors, fun patterns, and funky styles. In the mid-90s, Baywatch inspired some trends. Many popular one-pieces throughout this decade featured high-cut legs and a low, tank-top neckline. The early 2000s featured many styles that were popular in the 90s. Notably, the tankini emerged. Designer Anne Cole is credited with inventing this style. In the upcoming years, swimsuit trends have included one-piece suits making a comeback and high-waisted suits gaining traction. In the 2010s, it seemed like the most popular swimsuits ranged from vintage-inspired trends to slightly more revealing options. In 2019, swimsuits designed for poolside posing not for actually swimming and became popular. They were also widely criticized in the media. Throughout 2020, Leather-looking swimwear and retro-style suits with unique cutouts were also huge. In 2022 and 2023, bright colors and swimsuits with metallic-like sheens seem to be back in style. Well guys, thank you for watching until the end. As always, I hope you learned something new. Make sure to subscribe and like the video. Also drop a comment saying what you would like to see next. Okay, peace.